In this video, we are going to start taking a look at our grading objects and how they work. Now we have all the required pieces. We have a feature line and we have our grading criteria sets along with grading styles that I've already set up. So I'm going to go into the prospector tab now and we don't actually have to do anything through the prospector tab, but we do have to click the grading drop down. You could also alternatively do it through here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that surface. I know what it looks like. However, I want to create a surface from my grading objects. There's two different ways of doing this and they both yield slightly different results. So under the grading dropdown, I'm going to create grading and up pops our grading creation tools dialog box. Now going through the buttons here, I'm going to set the grading group. I want to start grading under the pad site. That's what this feature line is on. I'm going to name the grading group pad and I'm going to hit OK. Actually, let's turn on automatic surface creation. We'll use design and we'll leave all that. And we could make a volume surface based on our existing ground. So we could make two surfaces here. My tin surface is going to be called pad and it'll, it should make the other one automatically when we start grading stuff. I'm going to set a target surface. So when I'm grading to a surface sl uh, slope three to one to a surface, for example, I need a surface to target. In this case, let's target existing ground city of Calgary. The third button here is for all the layers, set the grading layer. And the fourth button is the criteria set. So I'm going to use our grading examples that we set up in the previous video, and they're all here three to one to distance elevation and surface. The fifth button here, edits your criteria set. So you can come in here and you can change this here if you want. The sixth button will create grading, copy the grading, create a transition or create an infill. Now when we're doing an infill, I'll show you that after we've done, we'll create an infill say on the middle here. We can edit grading, delete grading or change the grading group. Grading volume tools, create a detached surface. Edit the grading, elevation editor, grading group properties, and finally grading properties with a little hiding arrow that controls some of those grading options. Now, as you can see, this dialog box is already getting a little bit buggy. There's buttons here, there's buttons here. They're both the same button. They do the same thing. but this generally happens and sometimes these will go completely blank and you won't be able to modify them. I'll just close the command and reopen it. In fact, I'm going to do that grading, create grading. Everything should be set up from our previous command. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some grading. Civil 3D asked me to select the feature line. So I'm going to select this feature. Then it asked me which side I want to complete the grading on. I can choose outside or inside. Let's, let's do both. Do I want to apply this to the entire length? I can choose to apply it to say this side only or this side only or the entire thing. Let's just do the entire length. We'll hit yes, enter. Then civil 3d asked me for a cut slope three to one fill slope three to one. So I'm going to hit enter and enter and I'm going to select both of those. Now, as we see here, we now have a larger red object outside of the feature line itself. So what this fee, uh, grading group is doing is it is targeting the existing ground surface. So if I object viewer this surface, we are targeting that surface and it's targeting up because this is probably the lowest elevation. So this entire pad will be dug out and built underground, for example. Now, as you notice, there is a hole inside of this. So I'm going to create another piece of grading, sorry, and I'm going to close that dialog box again because it's missing some information and it's hiding stuff. I'm going to choose my grading examples and I want to three to one. Let's go three to one to a distance, but we're going to change those numbers as we're grading. I'm going to create another piece of grading from here to the inside. Do I want to apply to, to the entire length? Yes. My distance, let's go five meters. And my slope, I'm gonna do 10,000 to one. 
just to make it more or less flat. And as we see, the surface has expanded automatically because it's been included automatically. Civil 3D is building that surface for us. Now, when we're creating grading, I highly suggest not adding say any more than three grading objects in a row to a particular great uh, feature line so if we have a feature line here adding one two three different objects i would say is the max that you should probably go you could probably do more however you're starting to introduce issues into your drawing where you could possibly cause crashing and corruption so let's take a look at this object viewer and now we have that, the little bit of a basin with that five meter buffer that we've designed. I'm gonna use the infill command and select inside and hit enter. And Civil 3D's put a little white diamond, which we can access our grading object, but it's also filled in the surface. So if we take a look at the object viewer, we now have a rather not smooth looking surface because we've created that five meter offset. However, this is just a simple run through on the grading objects. Now say I wanted to modify some of these, say I didn't like that five meters at 10,000 to one, I could select that little white, tr the little white diamond, just find the diamond. If we zoom out and regen all, it should make them bigger. And if it's regening everything, yeah, I made the diamonds bigger. So I can right click and select, select grading editor. I can delete the grading. I can edit the style, the grading properties, the grading group properties. I'm gonna go into the grading editor, which is gonna bring up some options for us here. We can't change the target, but we could change the distance. So say I wanted to go 10 meters instead. It's gonna shift that grading object out. Say I wanted to go 20 meters instead. And I wanted to go 100 to one instead of the 10,000 to one. So we can modify all this on the fly based on this information here. If I select that and go to grading properties, this just tells us the style. It tells us what grading group it's in. If I look at the grading group properties, it's automatic surface creation and it's doing an automatic or a volume based surface. I look under the properties and it tells us that there's three gradings in this site. We have the infill, this inside piece, this outside piece, the grading group surface pad, the base surface, the existing ground, and then we have a cut volume and a fill volume. So 32,000 cubic meters, we have a fill volume of zero cubic meters with a net volume of 32,000 745 cubic meters. So we're all above or below ground, so we should have no fill in this. And then on the right-hand side, it just tells us the criteria that we used and how many of each of the specific styles. So after we've done that, we can take a look at some of the volume options. So if we go again under the grading dropdown, there should be an advanced grading. However, I, I access it through the toolbar. We can go grading utilities, grading volume tools, which will bring up our volume tools. Now we can raise and lower the feature line. I'm gonna click the Heidi arrow. We can raise and lower the entire grading group up or down. So let's try doing it up by 0.1 meter. So if I raise that grading group, we watch our cut go from 32,000 to 29,000. And if I hit escape now, I can't actually deselect, okay, there we go. Part of this is now in an area of cut, not very much, or sorry, in an area of fill. So we've, we've raised a little bit of it above ground. If I do it again, we have, we're down to 26,000 and 61,000, or 61, sorry. Do it again, 22,9 to 223, and it has a description of all the changes we've made. There's a button here to automatically raise and lower to balance the volumes. So if I click this button, Civil 3D is gonna ask us what is our required volume. Now, let's say I want a bit of extra dirt just in case. I'm gonna select the 150 cubic meters. 
We'll hit okay. And it should raise it up enough to give us 100, so 6,374 cuts, 6,525 fill. So we have a net volume of fill, but maybe we wanted to type minus 150 so we have a bit of extra cut. So 6,500 cut, 6,300 fill, we have a bit of extra dirt. And that is how to automatically balance your grading objects. And look at some of the volume tools and the surfaces. So definitely go through the help options. Look through help, look through the options, watch my video on sites. And I do have some videos as well, three more detailed videos on the creation of a very detailed pond, utilizing multiple grading groups, multiple feature lines, multiple methods of grading. So feel free to check those out as well.